Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and I'm here to do, now this one's a more steampunk type bracelet. The necklace I did in my last video was kind of inspired by steam, steampunk, I can speak, but this one has more of the elements in it, although it's still my interpretation. Everyone's interpretation is different. So let me show you the charms I came up with. And I just, some of them are loose because I not really tighten them until I put them on. Um, again, these are dark cobalt blue. I mean, when you picture like blue glass or cobalt blue, I'm hoping they show up bright. This looks bright blue in the camera. Now, last video I edited, they were a little bit better. Large bead cap. I had a small bicone and a large fiber optic bead. This one, I used a little bell. It doesn't really ring, but it's one of those little decorative bells. A couple bead caps, a couple of blue beads. Again, dark cobalt blue. This one was interesting because this is more of a rhinestone setting, but I thought it was cool to mix it up and use it as part of the steampunk bracelet. It just gives it a different look. This one is a filigree ball and then, or bead, hollow bead, with a little bitty charm on the bottom that has a little texture to it. Again, a cobalt blue bead and a rhinestone spacer. This one I used bead cap, a spacer, and a little moon, kind of a moon face. Now this was something I ordered special, that was more pricey. And this is a combination of some order, things I ordered specially at one point in time. Recycled beads and new beads, and then findings like this. I bought this at Big Lots years ago, a package of like, I don't know, it was hundreds for like $1.50 or something. But you can still find stuff like that. And a lot of pieces of jewelry come with it too. A little spacer, a fiber optic, and then a faceted glass drop bead. This is like a melon shaped bead. It's a frosted glass. Again, all these are dark blue. Oh, this is missing a charm. So guess what? We'll put a charm on there. I think I'm just going to do something little. I've got another one of these little bitty guys here. I'm going to put that on there. And we'll tighten it. That one slipped through the cracks. I didn't even notice it didn't have a charm on it. So that'll make it finished. And that just that's how easy it is. You just put a little charm on there and just make sure it's closed up good. And this is a frosted glass. This is a faceted clear glass. And then a little drop. And it's not perfect. You can see there's a little flaw, but that's how it came off the jewelry. This one was fun. I did a key. A very fancy, more goldish colored bead cap. I don't mind mixing a little gold in. This bead has some uh, AB finish to it, and it's either dark blue or black. I thought it was dark blue, but this might actually be black, but I'm going to leave it in. Um, I think it's blue. I had it in with the blue bead, so if it's not blue, I guess it fooled me. But that's a pretty one. And then here is just kind of a fun different one. And this I put uh, kind of a gear looking thing. It's out of one of those packages of fake steampunk stuff. And then I added a few little charms onto it. This one has two different little drops on it. One of those little propeller looking ones and then one of those from the earring that I used in my um, necklace. Now a lot of these loops aren't perfect but they'll be fixed up. This one has an actual piece of a watch. If you look at the back of a watch, you can see the little tiny gears in there. See how miniature they are? They're really tiny. And I was looking, and there's like one similar to what I used. I was able to find a bunch of nice taken apart watches. Now David could take this apart for me, and I might have him take a couple apart, but this had such a neat face, I didn't want to take that one apart. This is a piece that's missing its parts. That I'm going to make a pendant out of later. And here's one with some of the parts. And I would like to do something with that, but I've got to figure out because it's... I almost need to put a little piece of um, acrylic or something. Because there's... Uh, I don't think... The, well, those are riveted on. If David can take those rivets off, see, then I could use this as a flat piece. But I have lots of these teeny tiny little parts. And you have to cut the sharp little, uh, you can see how, how uh, they have little sharp sticks on them. So 
So my computer is warning me that it's about to go off. Um, so that's what this is. It's an actual gear, not one of the fake gears. Here's another piece of jewelry that I took apart. I thought that was a neat, and it's kind of beat up, but I don't mind. I think that makes it more charming. This is two buttons that I strung onto a head pin. Added a couple of those little bells, the decorative bells, and a bead. And that's all I did, is I put two shank buttons on, back to back. You can see the head pin there. And then add the bells on top to hide kind of where I'd hooked them together. And then I put a small, these are my favorite little check fire polish beads. Very simple, basic bead. Round faceted, or rounded faceted, drop, spacer, and little tiny bead cap. And that's just taken off of a piece of jewelry. This may or may not have. Uh, some of these beads are new, some of them were taken off of jewelry. Here's another one where I took a charm. I don't know if I bought that one or if it came off of something. Fiber optic bead, small faceted rondelle, uh, bead caps I bought new, different. Here is a piece I did buy new and probably paid a dollar something for it and put a bicone bead attached to it. It's a little keyhole. This was a ring. You know how you buy those elastic rings and the elastic went through these two holes and there was probably a hundred of them. You can see here's a bunch more of them. And I took apart the ring. It was broken in one of my boxes. And I onto that I strung a glass faceted rondelle bead with one of those tiny bead caps and a real piece of watch. These are some uh, connectors I bought when my daughter-in-law, ex-daughter-in-law, but she's still a daughter-in-law to me, in that she's my grandkids' mom and she's a friend and I adore her. Um, son's remarried, but she's still part of the family. She wanted a necklace, and one of the, these were in the necklace. So I found them so I could make her the necklace she wanted. Nothing I was selling, so I didn't mind copying somebody else's design as it was for just a gift. And she'll never get rid of it. Um, so I made that, and I had that, and then I just added a bead to make a very simple uh, little charm. This is a rondel. Uh, rondel. Uh, this is a kind of a swirled faceted bead and a piece of filigree that I bought new, and then these bead caps came off of an old piece of jewelry. This is an actual watch face. You can see the jewels. When you hear a watch has 17 jewels or whatever, do you see those little red, I don't know if you can see those little red spots right there? Those are little rubies. They're microscopic, you can see from the size of my fingers. But that's what the jewels look like inside your watch. There's one in there, and there's three there. And again, you can see those itty bitty tiny gears. A really cool face. This is more silver, but I don't care. Now this is actually a safety pin. I got these at Hobby Lobby in a bag on clearance. I would imagine there's probably available somewhere. And I just strung on two spacers and a small rondelle faceted glass bead and put a jump ring on the top. Here is a dragonfly charm I bought new with a faceted blue rondelle bead cap I bought new and these beads, these both were new beads. So that piece was all new. Then here is one, I bought these new Actually, everything on this is new as well, this whole charm. Uh, I think I dropped, what did I drop? I know I dropped one, but I don't know what I dropped. Huh. I heard something drop, but I don't know what it was. Oh, well. Here's another one I used. Um, did I show you that already? Or did I have two of these in this one? Did I already show you that? I think I did. Maybe I dropped that back on the tray. I don't know. Then here's a simple. It's supposed to be like a little. Um, I make little um, looking glasses. Or what are they called? Uh, glass balls. Uh, oh, what are they called? When the gypsy looks in the in the glass ball. I, for, I total. I don't know. Just gone. I do a little decorative version of those, and this is a clear one for a pendant. And I'd made a blue one for a pendant, but it's too big. 
and I had made this one but I just felt it was just it was the blue was a little off and it was just a little no I think this is supposed to be used no I don't know one or both of these I might use this one because this one's just not holding together like I wanted it to this one's holding together nice so I'll probably use that one instead here's another watch gear with two this is off of an old necklace I think um, this I believe I bought new but I might have gotten it off a necklace and I believe this is an older spacer off of a necklace or a piece of jewelry then this one has a key these I bought years ago I think 50 of them somewhere and then two beads I think this is off an old necklace I think these are all second hand here except the key and then I don't know if this is what this is off of I don't know but I love it and I put it with a little bicone bead and one of those vintage uh, bead caps off of another piece of jewelry and then this one just I use one of these little I got these also in a bag in several colors at Hobby Lobby actually not long ago in several colors I think I got brass copper and gold I don't know if I got silver and then I just added a bead a bead cap I bought new at the bead market years ago and then a glass bead that I believe I bought new then I was going to show you how I put together the charms and I have this gorgeous faceted round bead I mean just beautiful and then I'm going to put a bead cap on that and I'm going to I always like to do just one charm for you guys just to show you kind of how I do this I'm assuming most of you have made jewelry before but once in a while somebody watches these videos it's new to the game whoops all right I just luckily I knocked it in the corner where I won't step on it um, okay I'm gonna loop that on and then I'm simply gonna hook this onto this bead I took off of an old piece of jewelry and it already has the loops sometimes when I take apart jewelry I will leave the loops because they come in real handy for stuff like this unless I absolutely know I'm not going to use the beads uh, with the loops oh look at that see this is what happens when you're doing this and you might wonder and I've answered this before why don't I just loop it after the fact why do I loop it before because it's a lot harder to make the initial loop when you have something inside the wire so there's that one and I probably will have to put a small jump ring on that I'll put this heavy duty one now this will be on the longer end of what I'm putting on um, and I could have fixed that by making a smaller loop but that's okay I don't mind a couple a little bit longer so I needed oh I gotta tighten that I needed 32 charms for 30 well before I do that I'll just start make that the first one I put on so I've got 32 links and what I'm gonna do is put them one on each link now what I'm doing is I'll show you how I make sure they look right there's several ways you can do this you can do them alternating where this is a flat link when I did the um, necklace I used a small Rolo chain which was a mistake for that piece I absolutely adore this chain but do you see the difference this was too small to do that necklace if it had been a bigger Rolo chain it would have been much easier and see how it alternates you have one link going up one link going sideways curb chain is facing the same way but what you want to do on these bracelets or what I do is I put it all on the same edge so what I try to do, and I've got to tighten that jump ring, and I'll do that in a minute, is I will open these up, and I will make sure to pick it up and hook it down below next to the one, next to another one, so I can see which way it's supposed to hang. I don't really, I'm not really picky right now, which which goes where. Okay. Sometimes I have to hold it upside down to get it hooked on. It's. I didn't open that enough I think so the problem is there you go okay um, when you pick them up and start trying to hoop them on 
they immediately start spinning. Okay. I'll put one more on and then I'm going to come back with the finished bracelet and show you how I finish it off. Now see that's a little longer than I wanted. So I may change out this big bead. I have this one made up so I think what I'm going to do switch that out for this. Or I might just take this off and switch out that whole charm although that's kind of big. But I think I'm going to take that off and put this on it because I think that's too big. I really want to keep this bracelet reasonable because if somebody honestly wants to wear it you just cannot have such big charms. Some people request them. I made oh I would say somewhere in the 20s of these bracelets uh, back when I came up with the first one and I had several people order multiples. Uh, I had one person that wanted several different autumn ones and a, I think they had a black and white. I had all white. Okay, see that's much smaller. Hold on, let me get this flat. See, much smaller. So what I'm going to do is put one on each link. I'll do one more and then I'm going to go um, I don't mind them a little long, if, especially if they're just a lightweight charm. But I don't want anything heavy. So I just make sure, before I hook the charm on, that I have it hanging. And I don't care if I get right next to it. Um, but I, I'm going to try, for the sake of this, to show you how they look. There. And once you know you have it hooked in the right spot, you can pull it up upside down. Hold the beads up so that when you when you uh, tighten it, uh, you're right up against the beads. I hope I was in frame for all of that. And I'm going to do one more just in case I wasn't. Because I'll be honest, I'm looking under the camera and I should be looking at. But I have a bad eye and sometimes it's really hard to... Because the, the picture inside the camera lens is really tiny. Or inside the little screen where uh, holding the actual piece of jewelry even uh, away from my away from my face is a lot bigger so okay so it's simply doing that you're just going to go through now not everybody wants to put a link on every single or a charm on every single link that's my personal preference People call these all kinds. I've seen these bracelets called cha-cha bracelets, charm bracelets, beaded bracelets. Um, I just call them beaded charm bracelets. And see, this is how it's starting to look. And it's real pretty with the charm bracelets. Better than the necklace because it becomes like this big, thick, chick, you know, ch thick um, tassel of all these beads and charms. So I'm going to put the rest of this together, come back and show you what I do on the clasp and the ends because I do do a little decoration on there. So I'll be right back and show you um, me finishing this up. Okay, I got all the charms on. The last thing I'm going to do is I like to put a charm, an extra charm, right there where the clasp is. And so I usually do something a little fun there. So I have this one that's a little bit more extreme. I'm going to get my pliers and open up this big jump ring and hook it onto the hook that the clasp is on. Let me get my other plier because so I try to use two pliers and really get that tight. And uh, I usually try to do it till they're rubbing together tightly. So this is how the bracelet turned out. They're a lot of fun. They have all kinds of fun charms and beads. But that's why I like using the cobalt blue with the brass because it's very pretty. And the rich deep blue goes with the deep brass color. Now I like cobalt blue even with um, silver or copper. Let me see if I can drape it over my, find the hook again, drape it over my wrist so you can see this is what it will look like on. It's a lot of fun, and th these aren't too long. I kept these at a pretty reasonable length. I took all the big long ones off, 
And if you want to see close-up pictures, I will be doing a blog post on my blog, which is steffiesbeadsandbobbles.com, and there's a link to it on my link tree in the description box below. But anyway, that's that's this steampunk themed bracelet. You got the little watch face on there, and some watch parts, and a keyhole and a couple keys. This is more traditionally or closer to a traditional steampunk, but still a little bit more of my interpretation. Um, both this and the necklace and earrings will be listed on Etsy separately. The earrings and necklace together, and this. So by the time both these um, videos are out, those will be listed on Etsy. If you, because I can put ten pictures on Etsy. So if you want to see more pictures, close-up pictures, but they'll also be on my blog. So you don't have to go to the listing to see pictures. You can go to my blog post and see close-up pictures. I'll do kind of more of a close-up here real quick. But that's the steampunk um, bracelet. Now, I know not everybody likes steampunk, so I'm going to take a break from steampunk temporarily and do some other jewelry with some silver and other colors. But I just wanted, while I had it out, to have a couple more, a couple projects. So I'll put it all on a tray for later. But it was fun doing these two projects, and uh, I hope some of you did enjoy it. And we'll be getting back to some ornaments soon. It is Christmas in July. I'm hoping to at least get one or two ornaments done this month. And then after that, at least one a month till we get to the holiday season. But I'll be back soon. Um, and I really hope you enjoy this. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd be kind enough to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And if you like seeing jewelry hauls, yard sale hauls, Hobby Lobby hauls, um, that is on my other channel, Steffi's Beads and Baubles Jewelry Hauls. And the link is in the description box below on my link tree link. And that's where I'm moving all the videos that used to be on this channel. I privatized them so you can't see them. This is just tutorials. And I'm slowly moving them over there. I have to move them from my computer onto there and then delete them here. But it's, it doesn't matter if they're deleted or not. They're not visible here. So I'll be back soon. Thank you again so much. Bye.